What's up everybody, I'm Albie13. If you check out the thumbnail of this video, you can see um, I got this sweet Raspberry Pi case. I'm really excited about it, really happy with it. Now that we have enhanced cooling, NVMe drive, RGB, all that good stuff. So let's jump into the video. Okay, I realized that, you know, a few days ago I made a video about um, running a chat GPT like AI on the Raspberry Pi 5 and I made a grave mistake because I forgot to think about the quantization uh, when you run a model on a llama it just picks the you know whatever the middle or the default quantization or the one that they uh, they have it run when you run it and you don't want that generally because you're not running the best version of the AI. That's the smartest, most intelligent version of the AI. Uh, what you want to tune, fine tune for, or to find, is the best AI that your device will run based on how many uh, uh, billions of parameters, the B number, and then you want to run it on with as little quantization as possible. And that was where I made a mistake. So my responses were not very good. Now I definitely have better responses and there's another plus, which is that the AI is uncensored so you can ask whatever and you know not be afraid of it cutting you off and not giving you good information. Uh, so uh, here I'm gonna be displaying some uh, demonstrations let me first cover what AI I found that uh, there was a new release of the Dolphin series uncensored AI. The one in question is, but it's the Dolphin 2.9.3, Quen 2, 1.5 billion parameters, quantization level is Q8 underscore zero. Now the reason why I'm telling you specifically which one is that uh, the basically the largest most intelligent model that you can run on a Raspberry Pi 5 at speed at a good speed um, you'll see some video clips of it actually generating content so you actually use the tags to select which quantization you want and uh, now uh, Dolphin is is on a separate area for the models under their new name uh, for the company is it's cognitive computations so I think that this is the best model because it's going to be the most intelligent. It's the one that you can run as fast as you can with the current models and then you have the benefit of it being uncensored. I asked the AI to give me a simple explanation of quantization for you. Uh, I understand that this is like nerd speak and the average person isn't really going to know uh, a lot about these special things. So. Uh, let me give you the, the definition. Quantization for LLM AIs is like compressing a high quality image into a smaller file size. Just as you might reduce the number of colors in an image to make it smaller, quantization reduces the precision of the numbers used in an AI model. This makes the model smaller and faster while trying to keep its performance as close to the original as possible. It's a way to make large language models more efficient and easier to run on different devices. And the way that uh, the quantization levels work is uh, larger numbers better. So 16-bit floating point FP16 is better than 8-bit integer int 8. 16 is better than 8. 8 is better than 4. The AI just progressively gets worse um, to the point where it just outputs, you know, gibberish. Quantization has been a godsend because it allows all these models to run on, on smaller, um, lower tier hardware. Um, but if you go, if you use too small of a quantization, then it's, it's not, then you lose the, uh, how, you lose how good the AI is. So then it defeats the purpose. And unfortunately, uh, uh, the way that this works is they create all the different quantization levels, even the ones that are you shouldn't use. So consequently, it makes it really hard for you to shop for models and to understand this information. So with that said, 
I do have to mention there is a great tutorial video on installing Olama and then setting up whatever model you want. Uh, Keep it techie had a great video on that, and I'm linking that in the description. All right, let's go into the examples. In the past, I used a report on Bitcoin to get an idea of the training data or what the uh, the AI thought uh, in terms of what day day what time period it is because uh, you know you can you can kind of sometimes pinpoint the um, the data based on the what price the AI tells you um, historical price. But other than that, uh, I like my AI assistant to generate reports for me on things so I can just read it over, look it over really quickly, and get uh, a picture of all the information. So I, I like this as a um, personal request for AI. Uh, I did a decent job at it. Some of the facts were wrong. Uh, the, you know the creator of Bitcoin notably was wrong but uh, overall though it does help you get um, an idea of a, a good idea of what it is that's talking about so I do think this is helpful even though there are limitations because you're working with a small model I thought the example of you know give me instructions how to wash and wax a car just gives just shows you that it can create a long form answer and uh, getting the details right uh, again it did all right got some stuff kind of wrong but um, it was uh, it was some of the information was useful so for you know you expect that it'll you know give you instructions and give you some guidance on stuff that you ha don't know anything about so at least you can you can you can really get off running with it uh, but just to just to finish up my my thoughts on the usefulness of this is when you don't have access to the internet, this works offline. Uh, no matter where you are, you have something that is informational. Uh, some people like to think of it like the internet in your pocket, so uh, it's actually a pretty good way of thinking about it. All right, let's quickly go over this one. Uh, we, I asked the AI how many planets are in our solar system. It went on to say there are eight officially recognized planets in the solar system, along with the dwarf planet Pluto, which was reclassified in 2006. And then it lists them all correctly. And it goes on to say Pluto, formerly known as the Kuiper, uh, Kuiper Belt object. I think that is accurate. I did internet search that. Discovered in 1930, is now considered a dwarf planet. So uh, this was a educated answer versus uh, um, some garbage that lesser AI put out before. So that's good. Uh, good knowledge base and coherent. I tried running this model at F16 quantization and that equates to it being 3.1 gigabytes in size. And it's my opinion that it's too slow on the Raspberry Pi 5. So I had to step down to the next best thing, which was um, Q8 underscore zero. And that is 1.6 gigabytes of, of uh, training data or the AI's data. So I wanted to <laughs> create this video to rectify the fact that I had to remove the old video because I don't think it was right. It wasn't useful. Um, it wasn't good information. It's not up to my standard. So I hopefully that this is a better video. It's now that this new model is released. It's definitely better quality and uh, you know better usefulness. I think so. I hope this video was useful. If, uh, like the video if you like it. Dislike it if you disliked it and subscribe to me if you're not subscribed and if you're interested in AI information, um, robotics, and all that good stuff. Thank you.